Hey, I have another video on going over the basics of population pyramids. This is involved in interpreting them, considering these main six categories. Percent of dependents in that are economically active, birth rate, death rate, infant mortality, life expectancy, and migration. All of these play into how a population pyramid can be used to help predict the future. Here we're going to interpret some of these. So looking at the importance of these. So importance of population pyramids at the local level for policy planning, future housing estates, future schools, future jobs. Here's the town of Rocky Hill, historic populations based on consensus records. Well, notice here back in 1850 to about oh, 1930, very stable, very low, and then this rapid increase, this exponential increase. But in more current terms from 2009, 2014, we're looking at the median house price about the count of home sales per quarter and the price so the number and the price so this can help us indicate trends of what may occur whether homes are cheaper whether they're expensive whether they're trending up or trending down all these are involved with population pyramids so they're useful to help track birth rate death rate infant mortality and life expectancy we're going to look at a couple that are looking more at the large scale at the country level, like a country of Germany, United States, Finland, for example. Uh, they can also be applied to a local level if you have that data. So, for example, if more homes for elderly are needed, if there's an aging population, or fewer schools if there's a declining birth rate, these are, again, ways to consider um, shifts that should be made to a respective town. World population distribution, urban versus rural. Again, urban plus rural have to equal 100%. Notice a slow increase or predicted increase in the urban environment and a decrease in the rural environment. And our births per thousand, again, Africa being at the elevated level here. So population pyramids are useful because they show the effects of people migrating into and out of a region or a country. Uh, population per square mile is Louisiana, how things may change. The portion of a population who are economically active and the portion who are dependent on them. The dependency ratio can also impact that. Click this world population clock. Kind of a little scary on how um, rapidly increasing overall the world's population is. So if you remember back from some of the slides, uh, one of the previous videos, this gives some examples of what an expanding pyramid may look like, a negative growth, and a stable growth. So looking at the presence here expanding, very high young population, very sadly very low life expectancy, negative growth rate, not a lot of young dependents, and stable, relatively um, consistent from age 60 and below. So we'll look at Italy in particular here. Remember, we have our males here and our females. We're going to look specifically at this population and how things may change. The link here and, um, to some of where I get this information from, I think presents a really great way and helps you interpret these population pyramids. So Italy in 2000. Now we have to remember we have our different regions that we want to take into, into account. Uh, we want to be looking back at some of the previous videos to help explain what these may show. This graph in particular stops out 80 plus, so this is the population over 80 years old. Now, to look at these specific regions, um, we're looking at a declining birth rate here in this um, where area one's pointing to. Number two, we have something called a baby boom. This is the um, expanding population here in this particular age group. Three, we're noticing fewer men due to World War One, World War Two, compared to females. So that's why there's, or that's the reason for the less percentage of males versus females in this particular age group. And number five here, more 75 to 79 year olds than 40 than zero to four year olds. So again, this is a science for the future, the worker shortage and overall declining population. So also comparing different regions of this population pyramid. An aging population and a declining birth rate, things to consider here. Uh, this is, in general, what's occurring in Italy. So looking back, going back to our population pyramid for Italy in 2000, see this graph that we analyze. Now we want to look and see how this may change over time. So this is a prediction of the future. So if this is the population in 2000, this is it's predicted to be in 2025 and then in 2050. 
So we'll notice, and let's flip back for a second, we're noticing this change, and that's why I kept everything the same. So let's look again, 2000, 2025, 2050. Flipping back, we're noticing this region here is working its way up. So 2000, 2025, here's that population that shifted up. Now we're making the inference that there won't be as high percentage of birth rate. Because if we go back to the data we have for 2000, we're noticing a negative growth. And this will only get worse as we go into the future. And here's 2050. Notice again, it's declining growth rate in this large expanse of the older aging population. So the Netherlands, this kind of shows you it. Um, looking over a little bit of a longer term, you could see how this population is working its way up. So from 1950 to 60, every 10 year increments, this initial boom here, working its way through the population. And it just gives you an idea of how these pyramids can be used to help predict the future. Population pyramids have different scales. You want to look at the one in particular that you may be comparing, a particular country, um, the state or the county, different areas. Again, it can be at this town level, the state level, at the country level, at the continent level. Just be mindful of the scales that you're looking at for the particular uh, pyramid. Here's the United States of America in general. And we can see here's Alaska. So here's a very large the state level, the United States level, I should say. Now we're going down to the state level here in particular looking at Alaska. Now within Alaska, we're looking at a small area within Alaska, a lot more specific. We notice a major shift. Yes, these are all people of Alaska. These are all Americans. But we're looking at this level, we see a major difference compared to what Alaska in general looks like. And Alaska also looks different than just um, the United States in general. So broad, a little bit more specific, and very specific. There's a major shift in males between the ages of 35 and 39. Well, this particular area, um, it looks located right here on the Aleutians. If you've seen maybe the show Deadliest Catch, uh, lots of fishing industry it tends to be more of a male dominated, um, job occupation, very physically demanding. As a result, this area tends to have a greater percentage of male population. And to go back to that population pyramid, noticing 35 to 39 year olds able to work, able to, um, handle the demands and rigors of, in this case, crabbing or fishing uh, may uh, require. Human populations, throughout most of history, human populations have been regulated by food availability, by food access to an area, disease that may occur, and predators. This helps regulate the human population. Uh, 2,000 years ago, human population was about 130 million. It took 1,000 years for it to double, and another 650 for it to double again. However, Starting in the 1700s, technological changes gave humans more control over their environment. No longer were hunter-gatherers, using more sophisticated ways to produce food. This, these changes allowed human expansion to expand the carrying capacity of their habitats, leading to this basic rapid and extremely rapid increase overall in population because of some of these advances that we were able to make. No longer hunting and searching for food, able to keep it a controlled environment and be very productive in a very small area. Human populations. Currently, human population is growing at a rate of about 1.3% annually. The doubling time is only about 54 years. So this can be a little bit scary when we get into this exponential curve. Remember from the one of the previous videos, exponential curves tend to reach some sort of carrying capacity. Right now, we have no indication that there's carrying capacity. Right now, um, human population growth is not uniform. So it's important to keep that in mind. We looked at the United States, Alaska, and a specific town in Alaska. Also, our human population growth is different in different regions of the world. And this is an expansion or prediction of what's going to happen in the future. Remember that carrying capacity, this should eventually taper. Where that's going to occur is still unknown. A great video link if you're looking at um, population pyramids and predicting the future. It's about a five-minute video I recommend that you watch.